Hello and welcome back to Bug Realms. On this channel we like to discuss all things creepy crawly. So if that's something that interests you, please consider subscribing to the channel. Now I'm at an awkward place in my room right now and this is a totally unplanned video. I was changing out my fry granisture Husi Yen Tuensis and this girl came out to play. Is she not a true titan? Look at that. Now, as you would have seen from the title of the video, this is, as far as I'm aware, the biggest in length insect you can have as a pet. Now, these are actually the third largest stick insect in the world, but the first two, as far as I'm aware, are not in the pet trade. So you can't actually get them as of yet. So these are technically the largest or longest pet insect you can get. And is she not a whopper? Now this is a mature female. I will show you a mature male a little bit later in the video. I'm not going to be giving out all the facts of these guys for you today because I want to stick those into my Phasmid Files videos. Now if you don't know my Phasmid Files videos are my educational videos on keeping Phasmids. Ow, she's gripping me. Ow, ow, ow. And this one is purely for fun. Spontaneous, spur of the moment, fun video to show you a true giant. Look at this. Up against the wall. What a titan of the insect world. Now I picked these up from Curtis Lakin. I've actually done so twice. So two years ago I picked some up and I failed the culture. Then I picked them up again in May and I have been pretty successful. I did make a few mistakes and I will go through what I did wrong and how to repair that now. So they are in a net cage that is 100 centimetres tall at the minute. It could even do with bigger, believe it or not. Now although these would like a little bit of humidity, they'll be better in a tank. But to get a tank at least 100 centimetres tall, you're looking at mega, mega bucks. And I just cannot afford that at the moment. But it still has enough height for them and as long as I give them a bit of a spray and access to water, they do fine. Now here's the biggest mistake I made with these. A lot of phasmids living in an enclosure will happily molt from the top of the enclosure providing it has a grippy surface like netting or metal mesh and they will also molt from branches. Now the mistake I made in here was putting the food plants in a pot on the floor and they were only reaching maybe 50 centimeters tall because I thought it's okay, they'll molt from the top of the netted cage. But unfortunately, it seems they much prefer to molt from the food plant and that was my biggest mistake. There was not enough space for them to molt out to adulthood at just 50 centimeters in length because the phasmid needs three times its size in the cage for a successful molt. So what I did was I got two storage boxes, I piled them up on top of each other, then I put a jug with a pot for my food plants inside and now the bramble when it's in hits the top of the enclosure and it spurses outwards which has resulted in this girl and another one having fairly successful molts. Now you'll notice she is missing limbs. How many do you have, girl? One, two, three, four. So she only has four limbs and unfortunately she is unable to grow these back because she is fully mature and she is now laying over. But if it was a younger phasmid losing limbs, they can actually grow them back. Now these guys I don't handle very often and the reason being because they are prone to dropping legs. Most long-legged phasmids are very prone to this. So if I were to grip her in the wrong way or she were to struggle and I were to grab a leg instead, the likelihood is she will drop that leg, which is really, really unfortunate. Now that isn't what happened in her case. Her case was a bad molt. Their legs actually got stuck in the skin of the molt. And this is why it's better to have a tank with slightly higher humidity than having a netted cage. 
But I learnt from my mistakes and the other female in there is only missing one limb and she is sub-adult. So her next molt, she may well grow that leg back and we might have a fully limbed adult female. So, would you guys like to have a quick gander at a mature male? Let's have a look now. So here we have the other female. These are the boxes I talked to you about. Now it is cleaning day, hence why she escaped. So please bear with me on the look of the tank. But up here is a mature male. See how much more slender and brown he is in comparison to a female. Now if you look here, he is still large compared to my hand. Still has decent size to him. But he is nothing in comparison to the girl that is now walking along my camera. <laughs> Sorry about this guys. Right, let's have a closer look at our adult female. So here she is. Look how she limps along, but still does so successfully with her missing limbs. I'm sorry you have to stare at my bed, guys, but this was the safest place for me to put her down. Now you'll notice at the top point of her leg there, she has a sort of reddish colour. You waving? Hello? Hello? How are you doing? Fabulous. <laughs> anyway, yeah, she has a reddish colour, a similar trait to what the Indian stick insect mature female has. Interesting, isn't it? But what's super cool are the spikes on these legs. And I can feel them, guys. Even the hooks on the feet. I can feel them as they grasp onto me. And it's really, really weird feeling. It's almost like brushing your arm against bramble, which I'm quite used to feeding these guys. But what a monster is she, huh? Can you imagine being pinched by all those spines in one? Because she will grip around my arm. And no, the cut on my arm, that's from dealing with actual bramble, not her. So here you can see the egg laying part of the phasmid at the end of the abdomen. Now they will actually just flick or drop their ova away. And you can tell they're not a burrowing type because of the shape of their abdomen. They have no ovipositor point to dig down into substrate. However, they do have this spine at the edge of their abdomen. And I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know what it's for. I've never actually seen them use any sort of spike on their abdomen for anything. So this is actually getting pretty hard to film now. I need to change position. Come on, girl. You really don't wanna be hanging around a smelly man's armpits, seriously. So guys, there isn't much more I want to tell you in this video because as I said, I want to keep all the factual information of these for my Phasmid file series. So if you haven't seen my Phasmid file series, make sure to check it out to learn a lot of information about various stick insects. I'm sorry, I'm just fascinated, fascinated holding a bug this big. So you guys let me know in the comments below, what do you think of our girl, our Phrygrinistra Hucyentuensis, if I pronounced that fully correctly. What a whopping genus, huh? Let me know, have you seen these guys for sale before? Or are you interested in some? Let me know, because as I said, I'm starting to get overhatch. I won't have any for sale or trade at the moment, because I want to be able to raise a decent sized culture of these, but at some point, they will become available to you guys, providing you can show me that you've got a suitable setup. Just wanna get one more shot of her on my forearm there. Whoa! So you can see the true size of her. So if you guys wanna see what else dwells in the realm, make sure to pop back weekly for multiple videos. I don't think there's much more I wanna say. I know she's got my lip. Uh, I don't think there's much more I want to say on the matter here. This was just a spare of the moment video because she crawled out when I was changing her food plant. I hope you've enjoyed seeing her guys. As I said, let me know in the comments below your thoughts and opinions on this true giant. Thanks for watching everybody. Take care. Bye bye. Say bye. Take care.